Tree of Stitchless TV shares everything she learns and loves on her YouTube channel. You're listening to So Organized Style Podcast, produced by me, Maria Thea Harris, and Anne Wally, the Pattern Whisperer. So Organized Style Podcast showcases people in our community that help others. This is Episode 6 of Series 2, and this podcast is brought to you by our friend and sponsor, Erin Shields, of Style So Me Patterns. Erin is the indie pattern designer that collaborates directly with the sewing community. That's right, Erin featured in Series 1, Episode 10. Here's how... Okay, so here's a dare. Tree has been providing sewing tutorials on YouTube since 2011. So go into Tree's account, Stitchless TV, and count up how many tutorials Tree has developed for the sewing community. You'll be amazed. Tree is such a giving person that she features people from across the sewing community on the packaging of her bucket coat pattern that she launched last year. Let's get stuck into this episode now. So welcome, Tree. Hello, Maria. Hello, Anne. Hi, Tree. Lovely to see you and speak with you at such a wonderful moment in time where we get to connect with people from all over the world. So you're from an area close to London, so that's pretty exciting. Yes, and pretty busy and noisy and smelly too. So where you live, is that like what was originally an industrial area? Is that what you're meaning? I actually live in a really beautiful place. I'm at the top of a hill. It's very beautiful. And I actually have Turner's view from my window. Oh, There's a well-known view where I live, and it's known as Turner's view, and it's UNESCO protected. And it looks out across the river and across the meadows, which is very unusual for London. Yes. Oh, we're all going to have to Google that when we get... Yeah, we're going to have to Google that. (laughs) Definitely now. Oh, no. You'll all come round, won't you? You'll all be turning up, knocking on my door. Yeah, but I'd bring some scones with me. Oh, well, then that's okay. (laughs) Yeah, you can come. (laughs) Thank you. So, Tree. Yeah. First time I ever saw you was on Instagram, and I thought, there's a vibe going on about this girl. Got to see what she's up to. And I don't even think I've... I don't even think I've se- I've just seen the tip of the iceberg with you. Mm. So tell mm. us what you are doing. And if I had 500 hours, I'm sure I wouldn't even be able to cover watching everything you do. Mm. So give us a snapshot of all the things you do. Okay. That is a bit of a problem for me. The, the quantity of the content is actually a problem. So what do I do? I mean, if I bring it I'll bring it down to something really simple. Basically, if I learn a new technique or if I think of a new idea, I share it with people. So I've been involved in fashion and making things for many years. And it's a world of being very secretive and protecting your ideas. Seven or eight years ago, I pitched to a TV production company for an idea for a sewing program and they kind of laughed me out of the studios but they said set up a a YouTube channel so that's what I did and I decided to share any new ideas that I had about techniques for sewing or design or if I went to go and learn TR cutting or new pattern cutting techniques I decided to share them and that's what I do but I don't earn any money. It's a bit of a dilemma, isn't it? But you can't, when you've got something you need to share, it's in mm. you and it's got to come out. It's like, it's got to be birthed. Yeah. And you've got to do it. Otherwise. Did you say it was like birth? Yes. No. Oh. Yes. You can't <laughs> That's keep it That's a bit it more in. painful though. No, you can't keep it in, can you? No. no. You get it crushed out of you. Yeah. <laughs> in yes. a nicer way. I don't know about that, but yeah. When I was going through your content on your YouTubes, there is so much. So I just honed in on the things that I was wanting to find and I found them. So Mm. you've got a lot of content. I have, but there's so much content that, I mean, don't get me started on YouTube because um, (laughs) I'm not friends with YouTube at the moment because they keep changing the algorithms and there are new rules and laws and 
the breaks oh. are put on things. So I've got 95,000 subscribers. Wow. I'm lucky if a thousand people see a video that I put out there. What? And when I go and look at, I know it's appalling. And when I, when I go and look at the activity of mm. that thousand, I'm lucky if 12% of them are actually subscribers. So, oh. yeah, no, I know it's appalling. I mean, yeah. that's another conversation and it's quite a negative conversation. So let's have a happy conversation. Okay. So I've got, yeah, in the, old, in the old days, I would put videos out and in, in the first couple of days, it'd be about 25,000, 30,000, then it would build up over a few months to like 100,000 or something mm. views, that is. But it doesn't happen anymore. It's funny, isn't it? Once you get used to the way something works and everyone's done a course on how to get the most out of a certain yeah, product, it changes. It. Yeah, yeah, but I still love it a lot. Okay, so it hasn't put you off. You're still producing videos of things that you learn and you share. Because it's very liberating. It's just really liberating to share knowledge. I enjoy it a lot. Do you have a list somewhere on like your web page or something like that of all the YouTubes you've ever done? Okay, now I'm really embarrassed because oh. I don't actually have. I've invested all of my energy into a platform where I have no ownership. So although I have got a website out there, I don't use it because it's so rubbish. And so I have no ownership of, yeah, I don't, I know, of all those 95,000 people that have chosen to subscribe to me. Well, what about if you had some kind of a, a list? Because I think that you're not afraid to jump into anything. Like you've done incredible work and you've gone to incredible courses. And if I knew, like I, I probably wouldn't, if I thought, oh, something or other, and I thought, I wonder if Tree's done it. I'd just kind of yeah. Google it. But if I looked at your list and go, what else has she done? I'd be going yeah. down that list and ticking them off and getting through it like a library. That's a really simple but genius idea, Ooh, actually. You don't want to make it complicated, gosh. No, um, no. But I do need a website. Well, even just a free one. And you could just write down all the ones and yeah. the episodes and what you've done and then we could get yeah, through them. Yeah, see what's there. Because oh. what happens is when the videos are really old, like mm. they'll only show you about 100 of them, but there are actually 200 of them. Mm. But they're out there and you can find them if you specifically search for them, but you don't know to search That's for it. them. Anyway, I need to be much more upbeat. Oh, well, no, no, no. Uh, look, just a library. A library. Yeah, yeah. A library. And the library has um, search criteria, right? So you've probably got yeah. search words for each of the videos. Yeah, I have. They're all like tagged. Yeah. 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 And then we can be brilliant because I can tell you by the time we get through all of those, I think we're going to know everything. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't know about that, but yeah. It would help. Yeah, but thank you. It'd be a great I'm looking resource. at your top. It's a shame you can't see me. I'm looking at your top. Is it two different fabric? <laughs> is it two different fabrics or is it a... No. It's a digital print. I bought it when I was in... Um, with Rylas in um, the States this year. Oh, she's brilliant. Oh, yeah, she, she is. It out. She oh. said, um, so, oh, look, I've loved making it. It took me a while to get my head around what to do with it. And I thought, don't do much with it because it's no. too crazy. But the photos yeah. and the way it comes up on Instagram, it makes you Looks look like you've holes in you. <laughs> Love it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so Can are they pillars? Is it an actual scene? Yes, it's got a Cuban car, a taxi down in... I've oh, done I know the too. one. I've seen it. Yeah. 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 We'll have to put that in the show notes. Yeah. I can only see you you're, you're above your boobies up. Yes, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> the world's not big enough for that. Um, <laughs> well, not really. So tell me about your plantoon dress. I was very intrigued with that. There's a few other patterns that I want to talk about, but... This plantoon dress. Pontoon. Pontoon. So now, is that name, did you always have, because I loved watching you jump off the pier or was that a pontoon that you jumped off? Yeah. 
Well, I don't know what you call it, but yeah. So do you want to know the story? Yes, please. <laughs> so it's a shame we haven't got um, the video thing because I could just show you. So basically, when I go on holiday, I'm not very good at going on holiday. I'm not very good at doing nothing. I, and I, I've got like dyslexia, so I don't enjoy reading. Reading isn't relaxing for me. Okay. So I will always take a little sew machine. In my case, when we go on our proper two week summer holidays and people always mo the family always moan at me when I do and I can't kind of get it out in the beginning because you know we've just started on holiday and stuff so by the end of the first week I am so bored sorry <laughs> I know that sounds really bad they've spent loads of money on holiday but I start to get really agitated and kind of a bit naughty so I had this really expensive silk that I bought from this lovely place called Loving the Fabric. I think it was like 28, 30 pounds a meter. Oh. Uh, yeah, and I made, I made, I had three meters of it and I made this dress, but it kind of looked too lovely. It looked like a wedding dress, because it, it was white. So I wore it down to Agni Beach, which is quite a well-known beach in terms of the Durrells. And I didn't tell anyone I was going to do it. And I said, oh, can you just film me for a minute? I said to and I just, I wasn't even sure what I was going to do. And I, I ran down the pontoon and I still wasn't sure if I was going to jump off. But then I did. Oh. And, and I don't recommend it because it's quite scary. Because when you swim in the sea, the dress really wraps around your legs. Oh. And I'm not a very confident singer. So anyway, so I swam in the sea and I swam under the sea, by which time my daughter went in there with one of those GoPro things. Yeah, and I pretended that I did it to distress the fabric, like I really wanted to do it. Oh, that's clever. But, but it ended up being a really good marketing thing, because everybody said, oh, where's that dress from? Where can I get the pattern? So I quickly made the pattern. Well, I did. Oh, I had it well nice. done. Well, I wasn't sure what came first, the chicken or the egg, so now we know. Oh, no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> so you were saying you weren't, you didn't really want to jump in, but you did jump in. Yeah. Well, I didn't know that I was going to jump in. It was just, I don't know. I didn't know if I wanted them to take a photo of me on the pontoon or, but by that time I was so like agitated and bored from having not done anything for a long time. I, I don't know. I felt we call naughty, that stir, so I jumped off. <laughs> stir crazy. That's right. Yeah, stir crazy. But it's really bad because it's a very nice place we go on holidays. So Anyway, so I don't want to sound too much like a crazy person. So that's why it's called the pontoon tear dress, and I'm showing you it, but you can't see it. And, and I've seen it on your YouTube video. It's beautiful, with all the variations that you had for yeah. frock tails as well. Well, I'm a bit of a hacker. That is an expression, isn't it? Yes. Oh, yeah. For patterns. Can I, know, can I say something about patterns now, even though I've got yeah. two yes. patterns out? So people don't ever know how to take me because I don't toe the line. So even though, you know, I've worked producing for Jean Muir and Jaeger in my past and stuff yeah. in, in production, if I know that there's a quicker way to do something, I'm sorry, I'm going to, to do it that way. I don't care what the sewing police say, I will do it that way and I will end up with professional results. So anyway, as part of that, after years and years of teaching people that are starting out in sewing, I understand that one of their biggest problems is trying to interpret sewing patterns, find their size on mm. sewing patterns, mm. and then be an octopus and try and make it fit them. Yeah? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, yeah, yeah. so I really encourage people to get old clothes from charity shops that you probably hate the fabric, but if the fit is good, that is your most perfect sewing pattern mm. ever. Yeah. But do buy my sewing patterns. Just don't of buy course. mine. Of, of course. course. <laughs> I, I think underwear patterns, if you find one with, I, I don't make thermal underwear, but I'll buy it. And I find that there's some connection with, they like it to be tighter than normal underwear. And so thermal underwear fits me incredibly well. I get my best necklines. From those ones they're not too high they're not too low what do you mean and, what do you mean well the neckline on some of the they're like t-tops but yeah. the neckline's lower 
it's just wherever it seems to hit the ones that I get and they keep me really warm I just love the neckline so I will mm. gauge where that sits and the curve sometimes oh, I'll just cut it now and I've got it down yeah, pat, yeah. But, but you're right you put on something and you go I feel it's just exactly what I want to feel like I'm not yeah. thinking about it and you it feel it off. different yeah yeah trace it off yeah. Just trace it off. Do you, um, Anne, do you yes. have your own, I mean, I feel like interviewing you. Go okay. for it, Tree. So, so I've got a few, may, may I ask you a few yes. questions? Please yeah. do. Okay, I think I have three main ones. But do you have a pattern range? A range I, of have, pattern? I have a lot I'm of really patterns really sorry that, that I, I don't use. know. Say that again. I have, a, I have a few patterns that I have created for workshops. It probably started because when I want to do workshops I find it quite troublesome if people have got different shapes that is my worst nightmare that someone would come to one of my workshop they can't wear one of the things that we've chosen so I yeah. would have items in shops where people can try them on to see if it fits them and then they can come to the workshop so that wasn't working because people still didn't want to try things on so I designed a few pieces that I know I can change by just making a little bit wider, a little bit shorter, right. bringing it in. And I can pretty much fit without having two hours worth of fitting because yeah. no one's got the time when we're trying to make a dress. So no. I made it out of need and also to make it an inclusive workshop where people don't, I've heard stories anyway, tree where people turn up and they're like, well, make it for a friend. It doesn't fit you. And I think that that's not no. what it's about. No. And you can't ask people their size. It's pretty tricky. So that has been the need that I've been coming up with things that most people can try them on. And because I make a lot of clothes that fit me, I do workshops where people try my clothes on. And I'm Mrs. Average. My body, my height, my shape is pretty average. So yeah. that means that whatever's going to fit me and I can work on is going to look better on other people. And it usually does. Yeah. You do a lot of relying upon gorgeous fabrics, don't you? Oh, I love gorgeous fabrics. Yeah. I love it. So yeah. St stick to simple shapes and let the, yeah. the fabric speak for themselves. Yeah. I yeah, really no. love fabric. Yeah. And it just elevates my mood. So it's a selfish desire to wake up each day and put something on that I feel good in and then you know the grumpiness just disappears so it is very effective to wear an outfit that you feel good in but it doesn't mean it has to look flash or amazing it just has to feel right doesn't it yeah in sync with where you're at and some days I'm probably you know I don't know about you some days I'm shyer than other yeah. days and it's like a rainbow of outfits where you choose the one that you're in. If you, you need to be more confident and happy, well, then I'll pick a brighter one and hope yeah. that I elevate the mood. So it's all very psychological, isn't it? And also, may I ask another question? Sure. <laughs> in my interview. <laughs> um, why are you? I, I, I feel like I should know these things. Why are you called the Pattern Whisperer? You are, aren't you? Is that right? Yes. Yes. yes, yes. So what's that? Because when I look at a pattern straight away, it speaks it's whispering to, to me what it should be. And <laughs> people will say to me, what are you going to do with that? And I said, no, I'm not sure yet. And I thought, do you think I'm going to tell you now? I haven't <laughs> made it yet. <laughs> if, if I tell them first, they'll make it before I do because it's on a long list. So yeah, true. I can, I see people's patterns and I see, you know, I go and do consultations and have a look at people's fabric and patterns and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is that, this is this. And I said, yes, you must make that. So it's something that I can visualise in my head while I'm driving a car. I'll see a fabric in what I've got in my large collection and I'm already going through my filing system in my brain of the different patterns it'll look like. So I do that while I'm driving now don't come down to Melbourne and be on the road when I'm on. But, uh, <laughs> you had fair warning. Yeah, I yeah. get bored when I'm driving. So, you know, you can't sew while you're driving. So you think about patterns and fabric. Yeah. 
And I do feel like you should be a sunglasses, not sunglasses, a, a, a glasses ambassador <laughs> or something. I mean, you know the glasses that you wear? Are they a particular brand? Oh, I search high and low. I probably, I, my biggest chore is finding the next set of glasses when these ones, you know, have reached their You've got uh, loads expiry. of different types, haven't oh, you? I try on a lot. <laughs> but now tell me about this coat. I want to hear about your coat. Okay. So my pattern, I've got a new version of my bucket coat okay. pattern. Out. Yes. And it, it's got more of a range of sizes and it has integrated pockets. And I don't know why I didn't do pockets in the first place, but there are a couple of things I would like to say, if I may, yes. about the pattern. Okay. I get really excited when people make the coats and we've had three different competitions on, on Stitches TV on YouTube for the best coats. Now there's one person that I think everybody knows about who's called Judd or yes. Jude, depending upon yes. how you pronounce her name. I mean, she's made so many fantastic coats. So I've had to put her on the front of oh, the good. new oh. sewing pattern. That's great. Because you know, she really just has to be there. And then on the back of it, I've put, uh, how many different? Six different pictures with other people's bucket coats hmm. on, on the back. So running down the tab, I call it the inspiration tab. Yes. And there are six little pictures. And underneath each picture, it says, made by Lou David, made by Hilla, made by Mumtaz. And it says, made by lovely lady, because I couldn't remember her name. Oh. <laughs> my, my plan is for each next issue of the paper patterns, I will have different people down that inspiration tab. That's, that's really oh. lovely. It's a lovely thing to do. Well, the sewing community is very kind of sherry and lovely like that, isn't it? So, yes. yeah. So if you want to get on the cover of my yeah. next <laughs> issue of my bucket coat, you better get sewing. I better do it. Better oh, do so it. So what's the deadline for the listeners? I, I, oh gosh, I haven't got a clue. I've got about, I ordered a hundred of each. I've got about 20, 20 pontoon tear dresses and 20 bucket coats left. But they can uh, download PDFs. Oh, good, and Nobody good. seems to like it, but I prefer PDF downloads. And they're fast, aren't they? Well, they're faster and you can get them straight away, but then you don't get my lovely packaging. No, um, no. <laughs> so you like PDFs. Yeah, I like PDFs. I was going to say something about the packaging. Oh, I can't remember. Oh, you get a label in there as well. Oh, Which wow. sounds a bit arrogant. My label sounds arrogant, but I... No, 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 I'll read it to you. But I don't mean it in that way. Okay, well, on, on the label, it says Liberated by Stitches TV and me, which sounds oh. a bit like, who do you think you are to be liberating me? But what I mean by that is, you know, when you make something gorgeous... Yes. It, it is really liberating, isn't it? It you is. You feel like kind of elevated and boosted and lifted up. Well, I, I think don't it's know. perfect. Anyway, you get one of those in the pattern as well. <laughs> <laughs> I think they're fabulous. And I can tell you, your biggest fan, what, what happened with you had the meeting and her suitcase got held up? Oh, that's Judd, yeah. So, so, so that's Judd, okay. So, so can I talk a bit about her? Yes. Of course you can, yeah. yeah. Hi, Jard. She lives in the Netherlands and she had never been on an aeroplane before, right? Yeah. And she's never stayed in a hotel before. Wow. Right? And she, similar age to myself, which I won't be revealed. Well, I can. I'm 54. She's a little bit older than me, okay? Oh. And when we were doing the Frock Tales event, myself, well, actually, it was so different that runs the Frock Tales event up north. Yeah. So when we were doing that, I persuaded Judd to come, but I didn't really realise how great her fear was oh. until she arrived, and particularly they lost her case. Oh. So she was coming for one night to be in our catwalk show to oh. model like eight of her bucket coats, even though she has made 29, I oh. believe, bucket coats. She's a big fan. Oh. Um, that, that is a big fan. So, yeah, so she was really devastated at them losing oh. it. So then when we took her back to the airport in the morning, they found her case, you know, it had arrived, it had mm. gone off oh. somewhere. 
to another country. So I said, come on, let's do a little fashion show in the airport. Oh. So I modeled her coats for her in the airport while she was waiting for her flight. I, I would have cried my eyes out. Honestly, oh to lose God. your me made wardrobe or your precious fabric and all made up. I know. I know. She really was upset. And it had her prize because one of the prizes, when I do the, the bucket coat competitions, the prizes are three meters of my digital printed fabric. So that one wow. was a waterproof, um, this waterproof. Oh, I can't remember what it's called now. It's it's quite a, um, a tough waterproof fabric and it had the New York print on. And then for the sleeves, it had handwriting from the back of a postcard, like real handwriting. Oh, oh, so she wow. had made her bucket coat out of that and that was in the lost luggage. But, it, but they found it. They did find oh. it. Oh, if anyone would have thought to keep that, mm. let's just face it, any time anyone would have worn those items... They I know. Would have been grabbed. Mm -hmm. They would have, because there's only there's only one of those. Mm. Oh yeah. What an incredible story! I remember looking mm. at it on your Instagram, and yeah. I have to say, it's I love looking special. at your Instagram. is very entertaining. Everyone should just subscribe for the sake of subscribing <laughs> and keeping up. Well, that, that is very kind of you. It's it's difficult to know what to put out there these days. Do you find, and, 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 the, and the annoying thing about having a product, actually, because this is new, me having a product like mm. this is new. I was yeah. hoping to just exist by having, you know, it adding to my 200 videos. I thought that was enough, but it hasn't been. No. So I've had to come up with products. So, so when you have the pattern, the annoying thing is you have to keep going on about it all the time. <laughs> So maybe more recently, my Instagram feed hasn't quite been as interesting as a few months ago. Oh, I like seeing different versions. And I, I love the fact okay. that you show what other people are doing with it. That That's a heart warmer. It's a heart yeah. warmer for other people and a heart warming situation for you to know that people are using your pattern and being very creative and love to be part of that. Mm. Um, experience it's just wonderful I it's love that yeah it's great that you acknowledge their work with your patterns it's really hard well I love it when they hack it I, I love to see I, I love to sometimes people contact me and they they say to me it's okay if you say no but would you mind if I was to make and sell either something that they've seen in my video mm, or yes. actually the the, the bucket coats and even though I say on there that, you know, it's not for commercial use, yep. if they ask me, I love the fact that they are able to make money. Like lots of people make the Japanese tote bags. I'm not saying that it's completely my idea, but some of them have asked me as a result of seeing the videos and, you yeah. know, they're selling them on Etsy. And I love that. I love that they're able to do that. Let's get this scene done. Love this collar band. Let me just put this blazer aside for a minute and I'll give you some insights into Style So Me patterns. Erin Shields is a designing force of Style So Me patterns. I first found Erin's patterns when she launched the Nikki Blazer and Myra Lorraine showcased the Nikki Blazer as part of her Black History Month Pattern Designer Challenge last year. Now I bought the Nikki Blazer at the time and this year I decided to use it to participate in Myra and Natita's challenge again. Erin was one of their sponsors and offered a discount to the sewing community to try her patterns. So we know Style Sew Me Patterns supports the sewing community in many ways apart from the pattern range that Erin provides us. Making the Nikki blazer when I ran out of time this month was only tricky because it was crunch time when I got my act into gear to make this blazer. The instructions were simple to follow. The style is simple. As a petite, sometimes simple styles work best. Less fuss, no bother. I can always use a bit of style in my everyday life so it lifts my spirits and helps me get through the day a bit easier. You can browse through Erin's pattern range at stylesome.com. The patterns are available 
as printed patterns or as PDFs if you really need your pattern today. Don't be afraid to try these styles because you'll find Erin has developed video tutorials to get you from A to B when you sew her patterns. Let's get back to this podcast. So tell us about the bag that you're talking about. I haven't seen that one. Well, I'm not saying at all, okay, that it's <laughs> my thing. Yeah. But I, and my again, like I said, my sense of time is appalling. But I think about four years ago, yeah. I was walking around Bond Street, as you do, yeah. and I walked past them. I don't know if you pronounce it like this, Martin Marguela um, shop. And in the window, they, they had these, they're, they're, they could sometimes call them origami bags. It's oh. a triangular shape, yeah? But his ones look really designerish and stylish. So I tried to mimic that. And it was made from a, a quilted fabric with a leather handle, like a sleeve over the, the shoulder bit of the, the oh. handle. But yeah. what I did was I got an old sleeping bag yeah. and I made it out of a sleeping bag. So it was like, upcycling an old sleeping bag yeah and then I just put like a handle on it so that was the first of my Japanese tote bags and then it developed into other I made other versions I made one out of um, my my digital print oh this oh, is another good. story shall I tell yeah. you quickly yay story? go for yeah. it I've got a really fantastic digital printers called Fashion Formula. Am I allowed, allowed to say their name? Yeah, you just have. It's okay. Yeah, I know, but <laughs> I mean, you can cut it out. No, anyway, no, that's he, fine. He lets me take fabric that I want to experiment having digital printed at his factory because mm-hmm. he's not too far away from me. So knowing that with sublimation printing, it reacts to polymers like the plastics in the polyester fabrics. I had a little think about it and I thought, well, hang on a minute, sequins are made of plastic. Surely it will Mm. work on that. So Mm. I took some sequin fabric to him and it worked fantastically. And if you look through my feed, you'll see the New York printed sequin fabric. So I recommend you go to your digital printers and take them some plain sequin fabric and say, trees said it definitely <laughs> works. So print it. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, fa- that's, that's such a great idea. And I think I do now remember that beautiful print. It was, look, I just love it when you come up with this new wave of different things. I always find it exciting. And, and then you come up with something else and you go, oh, no, well, don't forget, I've still got another version here of this pattern. Well, that's good because it's keeping us plugged in and keeps us on the story because really the whole thing's a story, isn't it, Tree? Mm. Yeah, it is. I also love the factory as well. Do you love factories? Do you get to see many factories where you are, like mass producing stuff? No. I think a lot of it's outsourced in Australia. Oh, is it really? I think mm. there... There is, um, there are some producers here in Australia, but not as many as there were probably 30 years ago. Yeah. It's coming back a lot over here. Okay. And a couple of years ago, I discovered an amazing place in North London that's a social enterprise, and they do mass productions for ASOS, Burberry, you know, like many big companies. Yes, yes. Uh, like high street names and then like designer names. And then they have a small studio where they do runs of five to 50. Oh. And they also have a pattern cutting studio. And they have this whole other place that is a, called the Technology Academy, where people in London can go and do like a six or a 10 week course in pattern cutting or sewing. Yeah. And if they're out of work or earning less than a certain amount of money that I don't know what it is, yeah. the government pays for it and they can go and um, train there. Wonderful. And it's That's a great initiative. Yeah, yeah. So they allowed me to film there. So is and that on YouTube? Yeah. It's called, I think a tour around fashion capital. Oh, okay. Oh, it's fascinating. It's amazing. The woman that runs it, she's like this superhuman, fantastic, amazing place, person that goes around the world talking about setting up factories and social enterprises. Wow. Mm. Well, that's something I'm going to have to watch, isn't it? Yeah. No, it's, I think it, so. I was, there the, I was there the other day, actually. But yeah. You know what I'd, I'd do? Um, I was just thinking that getting that library of all the things you've done is going to take you a while. What about if you just gave us 10 each week? On oh, that's your Instagram, a good idea. you could just yeah. have 
okay, YouTube, what to catch up on this week? Here's 10. And then we've got 10 to choose from. And, yeah, that's a good idea. And then you've got it always on the Instagram. And it's content that you've already yeah. created. So it's just making sure people go back to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Cool. This is like a consultancy. <laughs> well, well, we want to watch what I'll pay you later. <laughs> we want to see it. And I, I really want to have a choice of which one would be most in my zone right now. So oh, yeah. thank you. Can, can I just say something to you, Anne? Yes. Okay. I'm really sure it's as available in Australia as it is over here. You really love print, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Now, I don't know if you're an artist or anything like that, but do you know that you do not need to be like a, an artist or a graphic designer these days in order to be able to have something amazing printed? You can just take a photo on your phone. You can Ooh. manipulate play with the colours on your phone, mm. go to the site for fabric printing and it, you can choose what sort of repeat. It will do a, a seamless oh. mirror repeat. It requires no skill whatsoever. I'm saying that not knowing if you oh. have any skill in that paint. spot. I what? do. I do. Oh yes. Well, how come you don't do prints of your paintings? Well, um, I was thinking more in terms of doing bespoke one-offs and I've just been doing some dabbling with some drawing and I thought I had a couple of it anyway stay tuned um yeah. and I thought I'd just paint directly onto the fabric because then I've got well, the fabric that is, and then well, that got, is I, amazing but then there'll only be one of them whereas exactly because the thing the thing no I know but we would like more of us would like it so you know in these places so for me my situation with hmm. fashion formula I'm able to have like a little shop there I don't pay yeah. any money but you can go there and order the Frida Cardo camouflage print oh, or, or the um I can't think of anything else um the New York print or, or whatever yeah. it just exists the library oh. and so all paintings could be like that as well and then I get like a 20% commission for doing nothing <laughs> at all you know how you're kind of you get a little bit stir crazy if you you know can't sew I go stir crazy if I have to do admin and I can tell you it's something I'm I'm overcoming but I really find if I spend a lot of time doing like you said you should sell patents and stuff like that I know mm. I could you really could, though. I really could. But then I like the uniqueness of the fact that it's for the people that I work with and okay. I also have, yeah. I can give them some advice. You know how you keep your hand in that whole situation? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I love the freedom that you have and you just jump in. But I don't earn any money, though. <laughs> but you could. You could. I mean, you're you earning money so. through the patterns, and they are yeah. stunning patterns. Oh, thank you very much. They are stunning, very <laughs> eye-catching and vibrant, and you can make them as vibrant or as very boho or whatever you like. It's they've just got. I tell you what, that that, that that is the great thing about printing patterns. I was quite anti-printing them because it's quite expensive to get them printed, unless you get like thousands done and I, I was thinking well I'm not making any more money on the printed ones than I am the PDF downloads which are like a passive income so yeah. why do I want to do this but I completely understand why I want to do this because I can do whatever I want on that cover yeah. and it's like a little bit of an opportunity and and freedom and I don't know it was quite joyful creating that cover and doing whatever I wanted hmm with it so true can i ask a question about fashion formula yeah okay so is fashion formula similar to contrato and spoon yeah. flower yeah i've got to be careful what i say now no 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 i'm just uh, i've yeah, heard yeah, the name yeah, and yeah. i've actually had fabric printed through contrato and i know yeah. you can do it through spoon flower so they're, they're yeah. kind of like in the same family aren't they of what they do yeah well well, yeah, I don't know cool. what it's like over there, but there are loads of companies in the UK mm. now, and there there are companies in Korea as well that are doing it very cheaply. Mm. So mm. it's becoming more and more competitive. I worked very closely with Contrado, trying to get them into the sewers market. I have to be very careful what I say, and I love the work they do at Contrado, yes. but I couldn't get them to be as financially competitive mm. 
as I wanted them to be. They have the most amazing range of fabrics and yes. the most fantastic products like espadrilles and beautiful swimming costumes and bikinis and yoga mats and sofas even that you can have your digital prints printed on to. Yes. But the fabrics, I just, they, need, they needed to be cheaper than they were. But fashion formula for me are very convenient because yes. they're near to where I live and the price point is very good and they often have discounts. Okay. Wow. So can I jump on to the swimwear? Yes. Yeah. And I saw that your mum wore Ooh. one of the swimmers that you made. That's what we call them, swimmers or cozies. Yeah we, yeah, we call them swimsuits over here. So I quite like to shake things up a little bit. This you do. Yeah. So, I mean, of course, I could get some stunning model to model my swimsuit. But my mother is a stunning model. So she's 83. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Um, I feel, uh, yeah, so I don't want to go down that route. Do oh, I? look, I, yeah. I, when I saw the photo of your mum in the swimsuit with, um, um, with, you know, how she is, I just thought that was perfect because she can put on a swimsuit and go to the mm. beach and it's got nothing to do with, age ability shape mm. nothing like yeah. that and i just yeah. thought oh that's that was such a positive image like a fun yeah. thing yeah so do you yeah. take after yeah. her or does she take after you when it comes to shaking <laughs> things up <laughs> oh gosh i think i really take after her i might fight it yeah she's very attention seeking oh <laughs> no <laughs> your poor mom i wish she was here no no no, no. it's okay she's italian we do a lot of that kind of shouty thing um yeah are you italian you maria i'll, I'll give you the full it's an i'm australian greek cypriot so i pull the whole thing wow. together but um my one of my sister-in-laws she's italian and i understand the whole talking really loudly yeah. when everyone gets together because there's such excitement of being together <laughs> yeah and yeah, you either agree. deal with it or you don't yeah yeah, yeah. you run away <laughs> Yeah, my other the other side of my dad, he was from Southern Ireland. Oh, so but you get there are a lot of Irish Italians over here and in America, aren't there? Oh gosh, yes, yes. and in Australia because I'm um, oh, Ireland are, background and but Portuguese oh, you as do well. Have an Irish background. Yeah, well, with a name like Flanagan, what could you do, really? Oh. <laughs> well, I didn't know that because I can only see Whaley up there. Well, it's funny because when my daughter was born i haven't kept my maiden name but i gave her middle name as flanagan so her her whole name's tara flanagan wally which is like who does that yeah no That's i've got what... double barreled for the kids where do you get your ideas from tree my ideas honestly come i i think from catwalk shows yes. more than anything else so i think if you were to ask me what my thing is it's kind of like a subconscious intention. So my intention is to reinterpret what I see on the catwalk in an easy sewing tutorial, an easy version for everybody to be able to make. And sometimes I achieve it and sometimes I don't. I've watched a few of the big designers and how some of them have just, the output that they put out for one collection and so many style choices and I always think to myself well you know how we hack our own patterns and we hack different mm -hmm. things just mm -hmm. to kind of change it and tweak things I always think that those beautiful pieces on the runway are seen in a blink of an eye and really we should be spending at least half an hour on each one and really looking at them because yeah. there's so much in them and I, well, I think the mass producing of so many different styles we lose our chance to really focus well i always recommend that people I, mean, I haven't been for a while but um i often go to places like dover street market harvey nichols and dare i say harrods so i can go and look inside it's really important to have a snoop around inside mm -hmm. you learn so much by i mean i don't go there and turn the garments inside out because it's quite a kind you know you don't feel very relaxed when you look around there but you can freely look i think it's an invaluable lesson to do that to go to a high a high end yes um shop 
and touch and feel and look at the finishes that they they use sometimes you'll be amazed in the finishes rubbish yeah that's i have another story about that one but i don't feel i can say it right now but um <laughs> yes but, 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 but you'll often, have to come back again yes yeah are there more patterns in the um, future? Yeah, there are. Yeah, there are, actually. I mean, I don't mind saying there's a tailcoat coming and then there's a very interesting wrap pants, oh. but, but awesome. not like regular okay. wrap pants. You know, like trousers pants, yes. not like... Yes. Yeah. Oh, I'm excited. <laughs> yeah, so Tree, do you have a question for Anne? Oh, two things. One, did I once see you at the Knitting and Stitching show in Earl's Court? doing a class is that possible i About was i did four years did, ago yeah yeah probably five years ago i was oh really i don't know where were you what were you was i was teaching and you were teaching oh i was going around doing interviews and at the different booths how did i miss you that's i'm sad <laughs> I'm really well, if it sorry. was you, if it was you, you did stare at me for quite a long time, and I stared oh, at you, but I couldn't quite place I can't, it. I can't but remember which. Not. I went in a stitching and knitting show, but it was not on one of. I don't know which. I can't think of the name, but it's on my one of my blogs. I wrote about it. Oh, okay, but, I'll go and um, have a look. Oh, it was so much fun going around England. Oh, so did you come here much? Well, we've been a couple of times, but I really, the last time we went, we checked out Wales and we had oh. an amazing, amazing time. And we really drove all over the place, nearly killed each other because I'm not a very good navigator and I was in charge of that. Oh, and let's yeah. just say it was a bit ugly. So we just went around <laughs> a roundabout. I think we did 15 laps and basically Bruce said to me, when you tell me left or right, that's when we're going to move. And until you tell me, and I'm thinking, oh, I'm imploding here. It's not working. Yes. Anyway, so I just went for a random one. It happened to be right, and we were on our way again. But it was, it's not best. So anyway. And is Bruce an actor? He's been on TV in a, oh. a, a show. Um, he did a season of Think Tank, which I think you had over in england for a while it was the australian version and he's a tram driver he's uh wow. it's just been released he's singing he's actually a singer as well believe yes. that or not um yes yeah, so he's singing at carols at geelong um next saturday in front of a crowd wow so as I don't a know. soloist or he's in a choir some christmas song but he's got his own he's forget what it's called where he's got a certain style of singing um okay. so i didn't know I, he's just one of these people that he sees his life and he he just does as much as he can 150 percent whatever he can do and i just uh run along try and keep up on the sidelines do you make his bow ties oh, he wears yes, bow ties <laughs> so I is have, that like a flash uh, no scrap buster thing no, no, he was on the TV show. He needed some wardrobe pieces, so I had Japanese fabric, so I made 26 in one go. And he's also been collecting bow ties since I've known him, so we have got probably a wardrobe full of bow ties. <laughs> and he likes the red ones, doesn't he? Last time oh, we he spoke, yeah, he wanted some red bow ties, yeah. yeah. I see. Um, can I ask you, Maria, where yes. are you? Maria. I'm here. Yes. So how long have you been sewing? Uh, since... Um, high school. Oh wow, really? And are so, you able? To, are you able to earn a living from it, or is it a hobby for you? No, I work full time in a different job. Okay. And sewing gives me an outlet to be creative. It's um, so important, isn't it? So many. Oh people, yes. So yeah. many people say that. Yeah. yeah. And, and it is like therapy isn't it as well not saying me therapy but i i see in the students that come to see me it's so much more than the sewing it is and i saw the videos that you did of the pattern magic the bamboo yeah. bodices and i thought if yeah, i had yeah. just seen your videos when i was working my way through that book it would have been yeah. so much easier yeah. well do you know what so so i'll just say something about that yeah so, so that, that's actually tr cutting Ooh. which is uh, something that's developed by a guy called Shingo Sato that I studied with in yeah. Milan. And Pattern Magic 
I mean, it feels like they're a bit in conflict, but I don't think they are. Her, her, his, is it a man or a woman that does the pattern magic? I think, I feel like oh. it's a woman. I'll say her. Okay. Uh, her origami bodice, the method that she would use would be completely different to oh. his origami um, bodices. Okay. Oh. Yeah. So there you go. Which is harder? Which is the harder one? I'd say that his is much more advanced. He he specialises in maintaining all of the original fittedness of the original shape yeah. after having de deconstructed the shape and put it back together with new star lines and details. I, I sound like I'm talking gobbledygook. Oh, it, makes, it, it's perfect. it makes perfect sense to me because I've worked through it and making sure that you got the selvage, yeah. like and the grain line in the right spot, yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Mm. yeah, so yeah, as I said, when I looked at your videos, I thought, oh, okay, <laughs> I've got a better way <laughs> of, of learning how to do it through, um, through Tree's videos, so thank mm. you. I think what I like about how you talk about things, you don't make it top secret, you don't make it complicated, and you don't mm. make it so only a few can come in at a time. You know how people mm. stand at the door for a famous nightclub and, and you've got this, oh, no, sorry, you can't come in because you're not dressed appropriately, you're not a boy or, you know, the ratio. Although it was around in those days. Yeah, me too. <laughs> and, and really that, that exclusion is something that I, I'm not going to mention any names, but sometimes mm. people make out that, mm. you know, that type of, type of way of treating people you know you you can't do this you can't do that and I'm thinking to myself well it's okay I'll do whatever I need to and I love how you just cut through that and just go I'll do it my way and mm. if you want to continue doing it a hard way and you're happy with that well I'm happy that you're happy but it doesn't mm. mean that we we have to follow other people's rules if we can find another way that just makes us feel happy I mean, it, yeah. you're not doing, it's not what I would call a workaround. You're enabling people and you're demystifying mm. um, how to go about it. And I think that's so valuable. And I mean, you've done it, what, in 200 videos now? That's a lot. Yeah. I just, can I just quickly say that? So, so for me, last year, I secretly, because um, I've got this dyslexic thing going on. I didn't do fantastically in school, but I did get art. So last year, I secretly went off and did a, we do GCSEs over here. I don't know what you do in Australia. When you're 16, you do like an exam. Yes. Um, it's called a GCSE, yeah? So I secretly yeah. went off and, and, and did it in maths in six months to see if I could do it. Prior to that, I thought you could only do academic things if you were like especially clever. Mm. I thought it was like a, something for people that were not... I didn't think I was clever enough... Mm. To do it so I went off and I studied it and it was like a realization for me that you know all you have to do is just learn the tricks mm. somebody tells you how to do it and then you can do it there isn't any cleverness so so things like that origami bodice whether it's the origami bodice a lined purse or a simple scarf mm. I believe I can get a beginner or anybody to do it because mm. You've just got to tell them the tricks to do it. That's all it is, like doing maths. I don't know if it's, that, That's the formula, you know the formula about. that gets you to the yeah, destination. Just, yeah, yeah, yeah. You just learn what the tricks are and then you can do it. And I think that's just fantastic because it just means that it's accessible and it takes the pressure off. And I've even noticed on some Instagram posts, which I love, where someone said, this is what I've made. I am quite happy for you to tell me what I need to improve with the fit or whatever. But I'd love the fact that you can also say, I like what it looks like on me. I don't want to hear anything that tells me how to fix it because as far as I'm concerned, I'm mm. thrilled. And if I do change my mind down the track, I will then open it up and ask you what you think. Yeah. But um, I just think having mm. control of what people think they can throw at us is wonderful and you can always delete those comments anyway have you ever had any mm. comments tree that you've had to delete do you, do you know what i'm probably going to get loads now aren't i 
I'm just going to touch this Anna de la Russo book because I think it might be made of wood. No. Surprise. No. I, I honestly mean that. No. Wow. I might get like spammy ones where they're trying to put their links in the comments so that people go there. Yes. yes. But, but, but in general, no, not even in general, just no. I haven't had... No, the only, the worst thing that happened to me was I, I went on the sewing quarter. We have this sewing channel called the Sewing Quarter, yep. and I shared it on my channel, the bit that I was in, and some woman in America. So I'm brought up a Catholic, but I'm not of any you know religion or anything. She said to me, "I've been following you for a very long time, but I was so saddened to see that you has, had so little." vocabulary that you had to take the lord's name in vain and i thought what really did i so i must have i'm not going to say it now but i must have said the god word or yes or, or something like like that but that is the worst thing that i have ever had in Ooh. terms of a negative comment quite yeah. an unusual comment when you think well, about what other people say on <laughs> that's it no i don't know yeah anyway so there we go yeah, but I mean, you know, I've not had any horrible comments, basically. That's great. That's yeah. good to hear. Yeah. yeah. It's mm. good, and it's good not to have that on the top of your mind because there's one thing about a horrible comment, no matter how hard you try, that's the one that keeps coming back to the top of your, you know, your thought I pattern where you go. But don't you just delete it when it's there? But you've still read it. And I think the best that's thing true. would be if you just see it's something that doesn't yeah. look quite right, quickly delete it and don't read it. <laughs> So, so the sewing and design school. I don't know how much you know. I you do. know, like I don't, I don't, I don't mean in terms of um, inside info or whatever. But how sad that it was deleted well, or whatever happened. Or is it like a new rebirthy thing and it's all great? Uh, look, it's worked out um, the way it is. It was a case I didn't realise, but she, but Rylas reposted a picture that she asked permission. One picture, wasn't it? Yeah. And the person yeah. who said, yes, that was fine, was not the person who took the photo. How are you supposed to know that? Yeah, that's true. But, but when you think of all of those accounts oh. that are often from not countries like where we are from, yes. <laughs> I'm trying to be careful what I say. I'm going to get oh. some negative comments now, aren't I? Um, there are so many of them, and mm. they steal my content. They steal my friends' content. Yeah, how can I believe it keep going? Yeah, and yours, I'm sure. Yeah, I've seen. Um, I'm thinking. I went through some. They always people let me know, and then I'll send a little message. Just tag me. I said, just just tag me. I said people are trying to block yeah. you and get you um, shut down. So they've tagged me, but I feel you don't get any response from them because they really no. believe that. I think they've even they, got pictures of the big Instagram women, they've got pictures of their modelling clothes on their Instagram. And I'm thinking... How do they get away know. from it? Yeah. You don't even know who they are. So yeah. it's really strange that they haven't done their homework before they do the reposting. Anyway, that's mm. another story, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. But anyway, I think it's a fantastic resource, her account. Well, it's shut down, so now I follow yeah, her. She's got the new one now, hasn't she? Yeah, yes. and also the web page. She's got everything there and all the... Okay. It's all done. Right. So it just it's one of those things, isn't it? But it was a bit of a shock. It I was a shock. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It just goes to show how vulnerable we are, oh. putting all our eggs in social media. Mm. In fact, I should be looking in a mirror when I say that because all my well, eggs are social media. <laughs> well you know it's that case of that was when I first started doing Instagram I don't I didn't really have a lot of photos of myself but I thought I won't have to worry about that aspect if I just have me in the clothes hmm. I'm not going to get because I hmm. thought it's just going to be too hard to get copyright on it was gonna yeah. it was just getting too complicated so hence there's a lot of pictures of me on my own Instagram and I don't have to worry about it but that's but it's a powerful topic. thing. I think it's a powerful thing seeing you in the clothes. Oh, I just oh, think, yes. look, I've got the average body. It's not perfect mm. and it doesn't matter. Mm. Okay. And you so, look good. And you Great. look good. That's right. 
Thank you so much for being involved in Soul yeah. and Lifestyle podcast because what you've been doing on YouTube is amazing and it's all encompassing and it enables and you're demystifying sewing for a lot of people. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Okay. So thank, thank you. you very, very much. Thank you. Thank Great you. to see you, oh, Tree. Great to yeah. see you. I'll <laughs> see you on YouTube. It. Yeah, all right then. Okay. Bye. 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 So Organised Style, spelt with an S and not a Z, is available on our website, soorganisedstylepodcast.com, with all the links for this podcast and our previous episodes. Hop into our Patreon page to provide us with a little bit of financial help so we can continue to showcase helpful people from the sewing community. Our guests bravely share their sewing and life skill strategies with our creative online community every day and we want to bring them to you. You can also find our podcasts on Apple iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, CastBox and Lipson. Subscribe to our podcast to catch every new episode and tell your friends about our podcast. Thank you to our sponsor, Style Sew Me Patterns, for sponsoring So Organised Style Podcast. Erin Shields is a great supporter of the sewing community. Our next episode is about Perfect Again, developed by Julie. Julie is a breast cancer survivor who has developed breast forms and mastectomy bras for the community. Thanks again for joining us.